So hello and welcome to round number eight of the MTB Mountain Bike Eliminator, the UCI World Cup coming to you in the heart of the Himalayas here in Lake Ladakh. My name's Matt Payne. It's a real pleasure to be back putting words to the action. Ladakh, for those of you who don't know, in the uh, north Indian state of Jammu and Kameer, Kashmir, and uh, shares its border with uh, Tibet, uh, with uh, Lahal and Spiti to the south, as well as uh, the Kashmir Valley. And uh, Ladakh uh, getting its name from the uh, mountains that define the uh, regions that surround the area and surround the Stanti Stupa. Uh, uh, Monasteries and the temple study stupa that we see at the moment as she uh, holds some relics from the uh, Buddha and uh, the Dak uh, meaning the uh, passes and uh, La means passes, Dak means uh, numerous. And there's going to be lots of climbs on our course for our riders. So you can see the riders are heading out, taking this left hand turn from the start and uh, very quickly down the steps. We've got a couple of uh, quick ramps before we go into our wall ride. This is the tight left, a 180 degree turn before the right takes them back up. Now, what a lot of the riders have noticed lots of climbing on this course that's going to be tough to make sure that everybody is going to be breathing hard. Not just because we are at 3,500 meters above sea level, that's about 11,500 feet, but also because we've got a lot of altitudes to climb. Now, some of the things you'll notice about the track here as we come into this big climb it's not particularly wide so if you are smart you might want to lose too much distance on that climb if you've got somebody with better legs going up and over as the roads come past the start and then head in towards the finishing sprint now that last corner nice and won't run too wide though they're going to hit that start line so real tricky course for our riders the time trials have set the seating and the top 16 riders going on in to our women's uh, quarterfinals the time trials well marion fromberger the uh, rider who we are expecting to dominate this should be the rider at the front of these and she's lined up in heat number one so of our four semi-finals from the de vries berecki of matos of beck strauss of the regulars on the seat and those riders who know the way that the course will ride when they've got lots of people racing against them but that gets a lot of our local riders here in India in Ladakh and I think that is going to be telling because the altitude here is going to take its toll on the riders they've all been in and acclimatizing and uh, certainly if like uh, me you like your trails are wild you like them rugged and you like a natural mountain biking environment, maybe something a little bit uh, different to uh, a lot of the uh, standard uh, trails and tracks that you might find. Well, this is where you want to come out. It's definitely on my bucket list already. So, from the on the right, Manisha is third from the right, then Chondal is second from the left with uh, Goja on the left hand side. The 15 second to go board is across in front of the riders. Let's see who is going to take the sound. They're going to go on the sound of the whistle, who will be our leader into that first corner now from Berger gets a good start off and you can just see she's going to try and go clear now two very different tactics here we see very different pedal rounds two riders will go through and qualify two riders will be eliminated and there are big crowds at the side of the course here in Ledley Dak to see our riders in action so from Berger takes that left hand turn in the elite the battle will be on behind because it's going to be about who is going to qualify with us go through into those semi-finals so Fromberger using the wall right not going too high on there and uh, going to make sure that she doesn't expend too much energy that battle behind those is going to be really interesting to see because that's where we're going to see who will make it through who will be eliminated our first look the big step up well it certainly looks like Fromberger able to handle that no problems at all the chase is on behind but at the moment as they come in and along from Burger able to conserve plenty of energy. She comes around, takes that left hand turn here. Now she qualified first in the time trial with a 56 second lap as she came in and around this course. And you just see how steep this climb is coming up and around to towards the start point. So Marion on her way through from Berger, the rider second in the overall standings at the moment. And certainly the rider who we are expecting, expecting to figure at the finals as well as in the racing 
all the way through. She's definitely a rider who knows how to pace herself. The battle behind is still really close, though. And as they come over the line at the moment, it is going to be a Stanzin Chondol with uh, Manisha, who are in the uh, fight again. So it uh, looks like Chondol just coming in and through. And then uh, Manisha in behind. And the difference between them, less than a second. Uh, Indu Gojar just uh, being uh, distanced now. So I think uh, Gojar out of the reckoning from Burger should go through. But the battle we have between Chondol and Manisha going to be a very interesting indeed so from we go up and over that step up no problems at all you see the battle behind the green light green yellow helmet and the red helmet as they come up and over and they're absolutely burying themselves behind and this is why it's important to get out early and then to be able to relax because from can now maintain pretty much the same pace here not dig too deep and particularly at altitude that's going to make a huge difference so you can just uh, see our riders are making the way up onto the course. It's going to be Marion Fromberger who comes in and through uh, to take victory. She's going to make her way in towards the line behind. It looks like that climb has done the damage. And you can just see the riders sort of stretching out here. So it's going to be Marion Fromberger who should get this. The push is coming from behind here. And look at this. It's a definitely a never say die attitude coming uh, from our second qualifier. That should be uh, Stanzin Chondal who goes uh, through with Fromberger so Fromberger in and uh, through and I think it's going to be uh, Chandler who's going to go in and through with a Manisha coming through in third place and fourth place will be uh, Gujar uh, afterwards so interesting first look at the uh, track in earnest as we can see the uh, Palace, the uh, nice story pass just in the uh, background, looking down on all of our action onto uh, the second of our quarterfinals. So uh, from the right, De Vries in the Dutch Champions jersey, then Berecki from Romania, our two Indian riders, uh, Chow Han and Ladol. That's right to left across your screens. Who's going to get a quick start here? Berecki and De Vries, very experienced with this. And De Vries, the rider who currently uh, sits right up in a fourth place in the series standing so going to be looking to take away plenty of points here today but Barecki's right on her heels here so De Vries leading Barecki in second position remember two riders through to qualify in to our finals two riders eliminated now down those steps and the big reason all our riders keep pushing is because it only takes one mistake on those steps on the drops on the jumps you can disable the bike you're then going to be in big big trouble and that's what makes the eliminator so fraught because there isn't enough time to come back it's not like an XEO the Olympic distance or a marathon where you've got plenty of time to get the bike fixed and get back in to the running again and you saw that at the yeah, the track, XEO uh, uh, World uh, Championships we saw uh, riders uh, come down come back up again what we find though on the XE it's about making sure you get absolutely everything right expending the minimum amount of energy through the time trial and heat enough to qualify enough to move through in each of the uh, eighth quarters and semis right the way through into the finals and then be able to give it everything in the final the more energy you expend early the more in trouble you're going to be and the riders the European riders are uh, definitely taking uh, their time of coming up here they're taking a look at behind it and you can see that they are being very careful this is smart riding they're not expending too much energy if they blow themselves apart now if they push themselves in the red zone then they're going to be in trouble because of course we are at some serious altitude at uh, 11,000 and 11,500 feet three and a half thousand meters of sea level nowhere near as high as the Himalayas and the Kashmiri mountains in and around the site but as you can see these riders making the way in around the side of the course here and it's going to be very interesting once we get the uh, racing in closer and closer together when we get the uh, battle for position because there's not a lot of room to get around it's about three riders wide most of the way around this course but if you're big if you stick your elbows out if you're dominant in terms of positioning on that bike you're going to be able to make sure that you keep position you see here one of our wider sections of course has come sweeping around the uh, side here so at the moment it's Berecki leading from the freeze Berecki with the uh, blue a shot as a yellow then the red of a Romania then the red white and blue well that is at the race in the uh, Netherlands uh, national champs jersey the Dutch uh, champion making her way up uh, just a bit behind uh, Esther Berecki so Berecki coming in uh, to awards finish these two riders are going to qualify by right and go through in uh, from 
our quarterfinals into our semi-finals here in Lake Ledak. And uh, now it's about fighting for pride on the way into the line. You can see just how hard this climb is coming up here. It looks to me like uh, Ladell has got to the better of Chohan on the climb. Just going to get that confirmed as they come in. Just going to double check as they come through. But I think it is uh, going to be uh, Tashi Ladell who's going to go through in front of uh, and the Palmer Chauhan as they come in through uh, is confirmed on our screen. So great riding that reverses the positions at the end of the lap number one. So you can't afford to go too hard too soon, particularly at altitude. Now on to the third of our quarterfinals. It is Maslila Matos on the right hand side of the rider who is currently third in the series. Time. He's the winner of round number one. Then we have got Beck, that's Hannah Beck of Germany. But alongside them, you can see we've got Angwa and Kusha also trying to push in to a position as they come off from that start straight. Now we've got a good time from Angmo as she was set in those time trials. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if she can uh, make this good. So, so uh, will it be Alites, uh, who is going to come through? Likes uh, Angbo from India, who is 10th uh, in qualifying on that time trial. Now, Matos leading, coming down in, taking that left hand turn back on the way round of that wall ride. And uh, Hannah Beck at the moment is going to score a lot of points here. She's going to move right up in those uh, standings, her best position so far. Well, that was in. Uh, Turkey in uh, round number six. She was 14th there. She was 17th in the uh, competition in Indonesia last week at Blanca Raya. But uh, they are really going to have the work uh, cut out to uh, catch Matos, who has shown that she's capable of beating the world champion Gaia Tormena, not here uh, in India on uh, duty for the uh, team. Riding actually quite a few of the uh, enduro uh, mountain bike events uh, over the uh, past uh, weekend and uh, just uh, on the team duties over there so not making the uh, trip uh, to Lake Ladakh and uh, I think uh, that she might route that later on That's uh, because the uh, altitude training here is uh, certainly uh, going to help the riders going out and practicing uh, not just around the uh, course but uh, getting some great rides in and around the social media coming out uh, from Lake Ladakh it's been absolutely studying some great images and some amazing trails and you've got to keep these skills you've got to get them absolutely dialed and the key here it's not just about being able to ride it you've got to be able to race it to do that you've got to be able to handle the bike and the riders really reveling on the uh, trails that are out and around and of course up here in the heart of uh, Ladakh. I mean, we're nestled in between uh, the uh, sides of uh, Tibet, in uh, between the Kashmir, in the Himalayas. And we we're talking some serious mountains, some great biking, and uh, definitely one, uh, I think, for most people's bucket list if you're going to be out and racing. So, Marcella Lima Matos currently leading out at the moment. The 22 year old uh, from Itaburito in Brazil, currently third in the uh, series of. Uh, we're all going to be looking to move up from that position. She is clear now of that Hannah Beck from Germany who comes through behind. And these two riders should go through as they uh, came through the uh, line at the end of a lap of one. It was uh, Liga's uh, Angmo ahead of uh, Safina Kusha uh, as they came through. And uh, Angmo, the uh, rider that's closing in on the back of uh, Beck there. So Beck waving to uh, make sure that she uh, had enough time. It was close in the end, but Beck uh, cuts it uh, fine, but um, qualifies ahead of Angmo. So on to the fourth of our women's uh, quarterfinals. Mariska Strauss from South Africa on the right hand side. They can run uh, Shrestra and Dolkar as they uh, go from right to left on your screens. Remember two riders through here. Now Strauss, uh, the international rider, regular racer on the International World Cup scene. Not just on the XE but on the XEO raced uh, plenty of world championships as well as Commonwealth Games races like the Cape Epic. Used to riding all around the world and the uh, really nice rider to meet at the side of the uh, course as well but she's not going to be nice today she's going to go out there she's going to look uh, to score big uh, points here as well as uh, make sure that she's uh, honing that form as we're running towards the back end of the season now Strauss only uh, joined in the uh, party uh, late on in the season 
is Maurice Gustraus who is leading out and uh, she started scoring points in Turkey she was fourth in round six in Turkey she was fourth in Indonesia and uh, currently lies in seventh place in the series overall and uh, I think uh, Strauss uh, putting all of that knowledge uh, that she got a bit of scene sports science of Mariska Strauss and uh, certainly uh, knows exactly what she should be doing to acclimatise to be able to uh, ride to a race and be right up at the front of affairs so it is Strauss leading at the moment the battle behind her remember this is for the second of our places to go through to those semi-finals two riders through two riders eliminated at this stage going into the semi-finals Strauss leading out now who is going to be our rider in second position with Garong Shrestha or Dolka as they come in through and uh, we're going to take a little look as they come up to the line so through the line they go and it is uh, going to be the uh, rider who qualified in sixth uh, position here as they come up uh, to the line so it looks uh, to me like uh, they're gonna have a great ride here today they're gonna move up and uh, through and it is at the moment uh, gonna be a uh, garung who is likely to uh, be the rider who qualifies and goes through up in to the semi-finals behind strauss but you can see it's still really close and we've still got that big climbs to come for the riders in uh, that second and third position so on to that step up oh nearly a big mistake there on the way through they're just looking to push there and this is the move that's being made here by uh Shrestha going through so Sanita Shrestha just pushing over the uh, shoulder there of a Garung as they came up and round that turn and that is uh, going to mean that that battle is going to go all the way onto the climb and then down over towards the line but Strauss is going to be our rider who goes through clear up at the front and look at this on this climb this is all about pacing and getting that pace right here Sunita Sharetra I think it's going to go through to take this she's really pushing on now as she comes in towards the line and you can just see I'm not sure that uh, Gurung has got an issue with the bike stuck in a big gear there coming up towards the line but good pacing good timing is going to see our rider through qualified in second position in this quarterfinal. It is going to be uh, Shrestha who goes through. So Shrestha goes in through with a Strauss. There are two qualifiers, and that is uh, going to I mean coming over the uh, line is going to be a uh, Garung and Dolka, and uh, Dolka just uh, about catching uh, Garung on the line. So here at uh, Lech Ladakh, we have got Fromberger, Shondal, uh, Bereki, Davri, Strauss, uh, Shrestha, and. Uh, Matos and Beck through the your eight qualifiers who go on to our semi-finals. That'll be four riders and again, two riders going on to our finals. So that is the women's quarterfinals that are done. We're gonna be uh, moving on now in the eighth of finals the uh, men uh, eliminated a number of uh, the uh, big uh, riders on the way through in the men's uh, competition one name that is missing from that list is Joseph Messi he was actually eliminated in the time trial earlier on at uh, you can see a lot of those big names so we could see that we've got Masumoto uh, in and riding from Japan this time around and uh, he is in our very first heat here so Masumoto up against uh, Erika Fierro uh, we had that uh, been a lookman along with uh, Gogia and these riders I think it's gonna be a little bit tighter as they come uh, through to the finish let's see who's gonna take this out it's gonna be close here I think because these riders are very tight on time as they go through we've got Fierro the fastest rider in the time trial with the number one plate at the front here immediately behind him Riyad Hakim uh, Lukman and uh, Lukman I think uh, could challenge here Lukman is a very neat overtaker very very smooth but look at this uh, hovering just behind a uh, Yuta Matsumoto well can he use uh, some uh, skills to get around these two riders the two in front are more experienced on the XCE over the uh, current round and look at Lukman giving it some serious hair on his way over there they're not messing around they really are taking that tight and Fierro carrying so much pace clearing those doubles no problems at all as he came in and through and the battle is going to go on behind him because Fierro I think has opened up enough of a gap here where he could potentially take it a little bit steady on a lap two you can see how wide he's running at pace they're gonna to have to be very careful when they come around that corner now at the top of the climb you take this left hand turn onto the finishing straight this is where the lungs are going to be absolutely burning but at the moment Eric Fierro takes that left hand turn now 
Now, Fierro has been known to put in a few uh, interesting manoeuvres on his uh, fellow competitors if it gets a little bit close. There's nobody near to, nobody needs to uh, worry about Eric on the way round, carrying a lot of speed, really high up on the wall right there as he comes round, but carrying plenty of pace. So at the moment, Eric Fierro leading, but the battle is going to be behind him. You can see him carrying uh, a little bit uh, less speed. He's got the gap. He's just got his showboat uh, just cases the uh, second of those uh, doubles on the way round. Just uh, classes down on top of the uh, second platform. Maybe uh, just starting to uh, feel the effects of racing that first lap. He takes a look behind him, and this is key at this stage because the riders know that they're going to need to be uh, pretty uh, careful not to spend too much energy showboating. Now the battle behind is going to be tight. Luckman is uh, fighting it out with Matsumoto. Matsumoto's got the front here is Luckman going to be eliminated he comes on the left hand side Fierro's going to be careful he doesn't get run down and Luckman comes in through there and just pits Matsumoto on the line oh, well that was great riding there by Matsumoto to get in front but uh, what a cool riding there by Luckman he didn't panic at all so on to our next and now Bjorn Bermelis along with uh, Tempu, Lind and Castillo uh, our riders Castillo and Yolo, Daniel from Mexico qualified in fourth place, Lind in fifth, Tempu in twelfth and Bjorn Bermelis in thirteenth but that was in the time trial that was one lap our riders are good to go who is going to be the rider who takes this uh, from the line they're going to be looking at going as fast as is uh, possible the 15 second board goes the riders now poised and ready and they've got to get this absolutely right out from the start there's not a huge amount of overtaking room on the way uh, through so a very quick start here from uh, daniel castillo noyolo and uh, noyolo are one of our super vast men we know that he's going to be in the mix he's currently seventh in the uh, series He's ahead of Lind, who's in 10th place in the positions in the overall series. Stalin Lind with that yellow across the Swede. Looking very, very strong as he comes around, taking that left hand turn behind the Yolo. However, they are lined up behind now. The rider who uh, we saw crash out in uh, Indonesia, Bjorn Bermelis, is uh, making the trip, having uh, uh, a lot of pace as he comes in and through. In fact, those chasing runners behind are carrying plenty of the speed. So Bermelis and Tangpo both are chasing the, these two riders in front. And this is where it's critical. They've got to try and get into position three, right behind position two if they're to stand a chance but at the moment you can see the pace of Lind and Niyolo they are absolutely flying and it is uh, definitely taking its toll on the uh, riders behind you can just see uh, Bermelis there uh, looking down at his bike at the back of the uh, train of four riders I think he may well have an issue with that although uh, if uh, like me he's struggling it may well be the case that uh, if you're struggling what you do you look down at the bike you're looking to see if something's wrong with it it's not it's just your legs and your lungs that are not working so it may well be that Vermas has got an issue with the bike, but uh, taking a pretty heavy uh, crash, taking up a lot of skin in the previous round last week, means that, that uh, he is uh, definitely going to be uh, suffering now. How much work are Niolo and Linda going to do? They're going to try and keep it together. Look at that. Niolo makes a mistake on the way through. And that's why we say that you can't afford to uh, make that. Lind goes around the outside, pushes it onto the barriers there. They both had a little bit of panic mode engaged there. Niolo landed that wrong. You ended up in the barriers. Lind goes around the outside. Lind, I think, is going to take this in towards the line. It has given hope to Tampu, who is sprinting behind them. They're going to have to move it. They are. They've taken a look. They know they've got to push on. But I think they are going to go through, and that was a big scare for uh, Daniel Castillo and Yolo. And they've got to wonder, has there been damage to that bike as it goes through? Lin takes victory, Nayolo in second place. Tangpu, very close to their place, and closing down. And that's all why we say you just can't afford to make mistakes here. If you get it wrong, you could get closed down now. Bjorn Bermelis comes in through in fourth place, so uh, his day done. As we move on now to the next of our quarterfinals, right hand side of the screen, the super fast starter Felix Klassman, Stefan Meyer in the second from the right. Then we have Anton Olstam and Sonam Norbu. Norbu are from India, already in the mix, already trying to push right up onto the heels. And you can just see Klausman from going from the fastest starter that we normally see into corner the number one goes into third position now it didn't pay off for him and we've seen a few riders starting to uh, push him on the stars or well, is he just being super smart here the German sitting in third position this should be pretty tight so Olstam leading them around that turn uh, 
Takeaway from uh, Ludvika uh, in uh, Sweden. Anton Ostam leading out at the moment. Stefan Mayer immediately behind from Germany. And uh, Mayer in 14th place in the uh, series overall. Ostam in ninth place at the moment. The two riders up at the front, but look at Klausman. Klausman's a rider here with the most to lose if he doesn't go through. He's currently sitting in fourth place in the series standings. He's got a good sprint on him, and I think he's waiting to make his move on Mayer now. Here we are. He pushes up and he eases up. We just saw him sit up there on the right-hand side behind Mayer. It's a long way down this start, finish straight here. And the uh, looking at each other, this little bit of careful manoeuvring behind these riders is giving Son of Norbert a real incentive to chase here he's only three seconds down in fourth place he could get back into the mix if they make one mistake now Mayer goes high followed by Ostrom and Klausman almost identical lines by the three riders over the wall right here at the XCE Eliminator the third of our men's quarterfinals at the moment we have three riders in contention with Norbu now not able to make that gap on the upper section of the course. They're going to come around and on to the climb led out by Alstom at the front of this race in the red and blue. Now Klausman comes around the outside. He, he moves up. They take that left-hand turn. We're up over the bump. They're into the finishing straight. Klausman moves on the right-hand side. May's going to go on the left-hand side. Who's going to get eliminated? It could be Alstom who's left for so long. Klausman pushes onwards here and you can see their shoulder to shoulder. No way through for Alstom. Ostam, and it is Ostam, Anton Ostam, who is eliminated from the competition with Klausman taking the lead when he needed it the most. And a great ride there by Son of Nobu coming through in immediately behind. So Klausman and Mayer through, Anton Ostam and Nobu are being eliminated there. So on to the final of our quarterfinals. So we have uh, Tornelon, Gerali, Tarasov and Shivin in that order from right to left here and you can just see that from the start they are shoulder to shoulder they're bouncing against each other just trying to get into position here and I think Gerald is the man who's come off worst here so Tornelon and uh, Tarasov are the riders who come in through and at the moment they are being led out here by Tornelon with that uh, one shoulders on his uh, jersey goes up a really high here immediately behind him Tonalon looking good Tonalon with a faster time in the uh, time trial but uh, at the moment Attila Garrelly the rider in third position is the rider who's losing out here and uh, you can just see he's on the back of the train of three and the gaps between the riders are starting to grow now the front of the race looking clear at the moment for Loic Tonalon Tonalon of France leading up onto the climb immediately behind him no panic up from Kirill Tarasov from Estonia taking that left hand turn uh, one of our Estonian riders so in fact two Estonian riders are due to be racing with Messi eliminated in the time trial it's going to be a left for uh, Tarasov uh, to uh, see what he can do for Estonia they're up against the man on the front though and at the moment that is like a tunnel on who's leading out a little look over his shoulder there ne neatly done as he came in there just making sure there was nobody coming down the right hand side of him well, that gap has opened up and I don't think they're going to come back to him here let's see what happens behind uh, tunnel on tunnel on's absolutely fine he's very very comfortable here behind Garrelly sits in third place he's on the heels at the moment of the rider in front and this is going to get very very close on Tarasov's wheel so tunnel on clear at the front behind these Tarasov now as pace picks up as they sprint up onto the hill they're going to close down on the race leader have they got enough they're onto the finishing straight Gary's has got to pull something special out here goes on the right hand side he moves back into the slipstream he's going to keep on pushing here I don't think he's got enough they're all looking behind him. you can see there a very happy Aloy Tottenham punches the air behind him it is going to be Kirill and Tarasov who goes through with Gerali and Shivan eliminated from the competition. So really interesting to see these riders pushing through in. And uh, as you can see, it is going to be Fierro, Bin Luckerman, Linda, Castillo, Niolo, Tunnelon, Tarasov, Klausman and Mayer. Talk close on your screen for those of you old enough to remember normal clocks non-digital. So interesting to see those results as these riders rattle through. On to our women's semi-finals. The action coming thick and fast from Lake Ladakh in India. From the uh, uh, Devries, Bereki and Chandal can be uh, leading us out on to the first. Uh, that it would be a Matos Strausbeck and Shrestha. So let's see who's going to take it out. Two riders through to the big final 
two riders going through to fight it out for positions five through to eighth place. So here we go. Who's going to take this out? Fromberger in the black. De Vries in the red, white and blue going into the lead. Berecki quickly over the shoulder of Fromberger there. And the rider who's in hit from India putting a great fight overtaking in the last lap in there quarterfinal that is stands in now Chondal so Chondal at the moment in fourth position the three riders at the front start to stretch that lead out led by the Vries now slight rise little ramp into that step drop down so you can just see they're taking this left hand turn around so De Vries leading from Berger in a second position here and it looks to me like Berecki just biding a time but from has got the pace and the speed remember this is the rider who is currently in second place in the series standings from Berger and she should be in a position where she can close the gap down on our series leader Gaia Tormena if she can take away a win here and score big points. De Vries wants those points as well. She's in fourth position in the series overall. And these two riders, they come up to towards the line, look like they've got the better of Berecki. Berecki just breathing hard as they come in and through. And you can just see at the moment, it's these three riders who are coming in to the line now. How smooth are they going to continue onwards? Where are they going to fight? I think the uh, riders really struggling with that climb, with the altitude at three and a half thousand meters. That oxygen is going to be substantially lower. That means uh, less uh, oxygen in the blood stream, less uh, to uh, fire those muscles, uh, less efficient riding, and very easy to make mistakes. And of course, it's not just about what goes into your muscles, it's about the oxygen going into your brain to process the course, to be able to make those decisions. If you're up at the front, you've Got a smooth run like the breeze that's easy but we saw castillo and Niolo make a mistake on the landing on this next section here so very easy to do that and at the moment i think these riders are aware that if they expend too much energy too early they're going to be really in trouble later on so here we go we can just see De Vries from Berger being chased by Berecki. She's not given up on this, but uh, I think uh, wise moves up by the two riders in front. They know that in those two qualifying positions for the main final, Berecki's pushing here, but uh, she's going to have to catch her from Berger napping. And I think that's not going to be the case. From Berger looks over the uh, left hand shoulder there. Not sure she uh, knows exactly where Berecki is, but uh, I think she's pretty secure. She comes in through the line. So De Vries taking the win. And Fromberger, second place, they're through to our main final. Immediately behind Esther Berecki goes into the minor final, positions five to eight. Going to be joined by Stanzin Chondal. Chondal putting in another good fight into the line and doing India proud there in the first of our semi finals. On to the second semi final, right hand side is Matos Strauss, so second from the right back, third from the right, and Shrestra right over on the left hand side of your screen. So India, Germany, uh, South Africa and Brazil. A real international mix here in Lake Ladakh for round of eight. The second of our semi finals here today. Strauss into the lead. Now, Strauss really is pushing here. She likes to lead from the front, but you can see Matos. Well, Matos is a great mountain biker. She really is competitive. She's not afraid to rub shoulders, to bounce and rub those tyres together on the way through. And we're going to see who is going to be able to go through. At the moment, I don't think they're going to need to. They've opened up a little bit of a gap here on uh, Beck and uh, Shrestha. And uh, I think that could well be decisive, even at this early stage of form. It's anything to go by, but it's so easy to make a mistake. Remember, these riders are in the time trial. Nearly a mistake by Beck. They're going up onto the top. You can just see the transition as you come off the ramp onto those flat platforms. It really is tricky, and they've got to get this right. So Marcel at Lua Mato, second rider in this string, currently sitting in... Uh, third place in the series she's got Strauss in front sitting seventh in the series overall these two riders have come through very smoothly indeed and at the moment they should be able to qualify but let's see what happens behind it looks like Beck is going to be overtaken here so third and fourth places are very close together now Matos just moves up on the inside here takes a little bit of a look across so takes that left hand turn so now Matos goes to the front of the race Strauss drops into second position 
and then the uh, first of the rounds that we saw Strauss had, she had mechanical issues with the bike the chain coming off the front chain ring and uh, having a repeated issue she had that sorted uh, for Indonesia where she rode really strongly up against uh, Matos and uh, when they were fighting it out in Indonesia uh, it was uh, Matos uh, who uh, came off a well, well, 18th position in Indonesia around she'll want to forget but it looks like she is going to be coming through into that final pretty cleanly as a winner Strauss I think is backing off the pace a little bit Strauss the more experienced to rider of the two so uh, Mariska Strauss in second position but still going to qualify for our final she's closing in on uh, the rider in front on to Matos and I think it's going to leave us with a very exciting final with the riders that have gone through remind uh, De Vries and Fromberg are already through from the first of our semi-finals and it is going to be Marcela Lima Matos who comes in through in the race lead of Mariska Strauss immediately behind they're going to be our two qualifiers who go through to the main final four positions one to four and as then behind is going to be uh, Sunita Shiretta and Hannah Beck who are fighting it out four positions five through two eight so there we go. It is Shiresa coming through, so a good ride by her. She uh, goes through in third position in the uh, second of our semi-finals, and then it's going to be Hannah Beck who makes her way in and through. So, as we uh, come to the end of uh, the women's semi-finals, De Vries, Fromberger, Matos and Strauss through. The rest of the riders going in to the minor final. And that doesn't mean that uh, the uh, next uh, race of men's semi-final is uh, going to be due to go. And you, as you can see, uh, we have a, a real mix of riders in here from all around the world. From Ecuador, Mexico, Sweden, uh, Singapore, from Germany, along with France and Estonia. So a, a massive mix of riders. So it's a Ben Lutman on the left of the screen, Lind, a second from the left, Fierro, a third from the left, and Castello Niolo on the right of your screens. So very close here, Fierro had the fastest time trial. Great start from him, a terrible start from Lind. He went sideways off from that start line. He put his foot down on the pedals and he went flying across to the right, then to the left hand side. Fierro in the lead and you can see how fast they came in there Lynn was not happy about that pace going into that corner with people alongside him he's dropped from second to fourth place here foot out he's normally flat out that was foot out and flat to the back that was uh, not what you want coming in there and I think Lind has an issue here not just because he's not in the front of the race but because he had really stuffed up that start he then oh, made a mistake of it in that corner and I don't think he's a happy body at all sat at the back of that Fierro though look at him he's actually on fire he's pushing the limit of the grip coming around that corner he's not leaving anything to chance so at the moment Fierro leading out in the yellow and uh, blue then in the all black behind here you can uh, see that uh, Daniel uh, Castillo Niolo is wanting this he's in second place but I'll tell you something uh, Riyad uh, Hakir Lutman from Singapore he's not going to give up he is a rider who we know will push to the end and we've already seen mistakes now you've got two riders who are known for their overtaking maneuvers here Fierro along with Castillo Niolo both are real fiery coaches where they want to get a position they're both prepared to make a move they will be prepared to push it are they going to do that are they going to let the race and get the better of them the yellow goes up on the right hand side here and they just take a back take a simultaneous look sideways now the yellow another that wasn't the smoothest transition through that section don't get me wrong it's probably better than I could do but he's still not getting up right and that could be telling coming into the final he doesn't get the section through there where you've got that roll into a uh, a, a tabletop and then a drop and I think that uh, just could be telling when you come into the finish Fierro goes around that corner in second position the yellow is up on the front here and the yellow already high-fiving the crowd on the way through we're only in the semi-finals he's already enjoyed himself out there on the course so a great ride in there by uh, Daniel Castillo and the Yolo. he goes uh, through then it's going to be a, a, a second place for Eric Fierro he is uh, coming through pretty smoothly there then it's going to be a Lutman behind and then I think it's going to be a Lind who is the uh, final rider in uh, through the uh, finish if he makes it there at all here he comes so Ben Lutman goes through in third place he's going to be in our minor finals in the position so five to eight and uh, you can just see uh, Edin Lind here just uh, 
maximizing the spin and just trying to get that lactic acid out of his legs uh, just uh, making sure he comes through to complete uh, the lap to move in to the minor finals so on to the uh, final run down in our semi-finals this is uh, Tarasov Mayer Tunnelon and Klausman left right on your screen good question is going to be who is going to go off fast Klausman traditionally fast Tunnelon would look very very dominant in his round in those quarterfinals and it's Tunnelon who comes out quick but they are side by side coming down this straight and it's going to be Mayer I think is going to take the front here but they are shoulders to shoulder coming in so Mayer on the left of your screen with the yellow shoulders the blue base to his jersey that is at the red who comes in in front but very quickly you can just see that uh, that has changed because uh, the uh, corner has been uh, taken very very fast and tunnel on uh, pushing up here so this is going to be very very close i think uh, tarasov wants to be in this mix but he at the moment hasn't got the pace to be there tunnel on leading he's on the right of your screen then he is mayor just coming up alongside him here klausman is in third position here there's no way through really on this corner but so klausman can push up the inside of mayor these three riders were shoulder to shoulder earlier on they're not afraid to bump against each other if somebody tells you that mountain biking is a non-contact sport well they need to come out and race a, a discipline like fox or even better come and race the xce the riders here working their way around the course remember two of the riders will go through to our main final for the uh, top positions uh, two riders going through to the minor final for positions five to eight and as you can see three riders in this group led out by the frenchman tournament on second place at the moment that is mayor of germany he's got his countrymen behind him that's Klausman in the white jersey with the uh, german stripes across the uh, black and orange stripes now the racing starts to pick up because they know that they're going to come in these riders are really treating this a lot like a, a track sprint in some ways being very cagey very careful on the way in and then unleashing the power they know they've got limited opportunities because they are at altitude that is taking its toll on the rider's ability to sprint here as when you take a big lung full of air you're getting a fraction of the oxygen now tunnel on goes through Klausman comes around the outside there but look at Mayer Mayer is right in the shoulders here tunnel on tunnel on could get eliminated after winning his quarter finals I think that's going to be the case it is he bangs the bars in despair there he didn't have it on that final sprint in Klausman goes through with Mayer and then Tornalon is the rider who is going to be pushed into the minor finals and that is not what we expected to see after that dominant ride in our quarterfinals amazing riding here as uh, we see the final rider coming into the line that is going to be uh, Tarasov so Tarasov goes in to that minor final as well so you can see on your screen so there the riders that are going through and it is going to be Castelliolo, Eric Fierro, Klausman and Mayer they are going to move on to the main finals the rest going into the minor finals draw a quick breath I'm not at altitude I still run out of oxygen on the way through here as you can see, uh, the uh, town of uh, Lake Ladakh, surrounded by the mountains here, and our riders are going to be reveling that. They've been here practicing, been getting acclimatized, something that's absolutely key. And the uh, riders in the uh, small finals, the minor finals for positions five to eight at the top of the listings, the uh, main finals at the bottom of the listings, the finals scores four positions one through two, four. So first off, we are going to have our minor final for our women. This is going to be from right to left, uh, Esther Berecki, Hannah Becker. Then we are going to see Stanzin Chondal and Sunita Shrestra. And they are four riders all looking now. This is a four position. There is a no qualification. It's not about who goes through in second and third places. This is about who gets positions five, six, seven and eight at the UCI XEE -E -E Mountain Bike Eliminator here in Lake Lodal. And uh, you can just uh, see that at the moment, Barecki are leading this out from Beck. And they have a gap. Beck, a little bit of a mistake on that drop down there. Really landed that heavy. She came in a down. She's got a 
uh, just uh, trying to get those landings smooth. Every time you make a heavy landing, you're more likely to lose grip, you're more likely to slide, you're likely to dislodge your hand off the bars, maybe knock a foot off the pedal, or you could break something on the bike. That is then going to be a disaster because there's some big points on offer here today for the riders in the overall World Cup standings. Esther Berecki looking to maximise the points she can take after not qualifying for the final has gone clear very early on this two-lap race here in Lake Dak, and you can just see that uh, Berecki has got the uh, climb pretty much down there, goes over the top, but we have seen riders start to falter as they push in to lap number two as the altitude as the climbing takes its hold of our more uh, Hilia rounds a fellow in Sweden, a very, very big climb there. And that uh, was very testing for the riders. Uh, Sakuraya in uh, Turkey also one with a uh, decent climb in it, maybe not quite as a big, but all of that really does pale in significance when you're surrounded by the Himalayas and you are at altitude climbing around the streets of Leh. And uh, at the moment, so you can just see Berecki has this dialed. The battles behind, well, they are very tight indeed. A third and fourth place in this race, they are side by side coming around a little bit further down the course, but Berecki, uh, she's got this very, very smooth back, has been well and truly distanced by Berecki from Rumi. Mania, pumping her way up and over that uh, session and coming in to the left hand turn here so just uh, keeps those uh, pedals level holding what's known as the attack position pedals level heels down arms out nice and wide just uh, bracing the body to uh, take it round the corner getting off the saddle and getting all that weight coming through the pedals on the uh, bike keeping that center of gravity low so it's going to be esther berecki who's going to take a top spot in our minor final here today she's going to take fifth place and this will help her in her pursuit of points she's currently 12th in the series standings coming in to lay she's going to be much further up the standings as she moves back out behind her hannah becker on her way in towards line you see the battle here for third and fourth is not over we've seen some great kicks in to the uh, finish uh, from Chondon and Stressler as they come in. So Beck comes through. She is taking second in the uh, race. That's going to be uh, a uh, sixth place overall immediately behind the uh, sprint on and it is Shrestra from Chondal who uh, takes it as they come in to the line that time around they're going to finish in what is going to be seventh and eighth place respectively on to the men's minor final next and this is uh, going to be uh, Bin Luckman, Tarasov Tunnelon and Linda from the left to right of your screen Singapore, Estonia, France and Sweden all represented here and who's got the big kick now? Lynn gets a much better start off from the line here. And they squeeze out the riders behind. And you could just see Linda and Luckman come together. And they really did a push back there on the, the rider behind there. That's Kirill uh, Tarasov. And he's got pushed right the way uh, down here. So uh, Tarasov has gone a long way back here. Tunnel on the... Uh, got a uh, half decent start there but he got pushed right back so taps off a tunnel on who showed so strongly in our early runs in the uh, time trial in the eighth final now being pushed back and down here in the minor final for positions of five to eight so at the moment it's linda from bin luckman the uh, swede who comes around that left hand turn followed by luckman luckman going all the way to the feet of those barriers out at the side of the course but at the moment it's lind who's leading up this time behind you can just see a massive push remember this is the end of lap one we're going to have another lap to go the question is going to be can they hold on at the front here it looks to me like these two are very closely matched Lutman are better on the climb which is the final part of this course Linda able to uh, muzzle his way up to the front in that initial sprint but I think Linda's breathing hard here he's looking down the bike as well that usually isn't a good sign just taking a look to see if there's an issue with the bike he's just uh, drifts across the oh he shuts the door there are Lutman Lutman was just on his inside and he went straight across the front of him here now is that a sign of desperation he's running out of energy he's running out of steam he's ragging that bike all over the place he certainly doesn't look smooth on there but is he just uh, waiting to unleash some power coming up this climb now he sprints out of the corner he's got the gap Luckman has to go with him he's got to hope that Lindy's gonna die a thousand deaths on this climb he's not Lind absolutely mullers his way over the top there ragging the bike side to side pushing on those pedals it wasn't smooth it might not have been pretty but it's been incredibly effective as Lind comes in through the line there 
absolutely spent. He's almost collapsed on the uh, bike behind him and going through. Ben Luckman, another group right by him. They've uh, distanced the riders up behind, and you can see at the uh, moment that uh, coming through, we've got uh, the uh, next rider is going to be uh, Kirill Tarasov from Estonia. And then it is going to be Tom on right at the back. That starts so critical. You saw that there. Linda Binlupman muscled out the rest of the riders and they couldn't come back. Tarasov uh, being pushed into third place and Tornelon fourth place in now, which is eighth overall. He's just about going to make his way in to the line. You can see there's nothing left in these riders. They're giving it absolutely everything here today in those minor finals. So, our minor finals done and dusted dust positions, five to eight sorted in both the men's and the women's competitions, which means we're going to move on to our women's and men's main finals. So, Didy De Vries, Mariska Strauss, Marcelina Matos and Marion Fromberger all with points at stake, all with the overall series at stake as well as pride. And of course the positions, everybody will want to take the win here at the UCI XCE World Cup round number eight. In the final, it's Fromberger who leads them out here. So Fromberger leading second place is De Vries. So look at Matos Hovery, she's waiting to bash. She goes up the inside of De Vries, she's making a move. Can she make it stick coming down the steps? They're side by side coming down those steps and it's Matos who's going to come into the wall right in front of De Vries. They're chasing Fromberger who's starting to open up a gap in the black on the front of the race at the moment. So Marianne Fromberger leading on that step up there. It's Matos who manuals away straight over the top. Nice style there from Marcella. She goes over the top and again carrying so much pace in through those jumps. Bouncing away through at plenty of control by the Brazilian rider there in second position. But she's got to match the pace of Fromberger behind. Don't discount the two riders chasing here. We've got Strauss who is pushed over the top of De Vries. She's onto the heels of Matos. Remember, this is for the uh, final positions in the race. This isn't about qualified in the set position. This is about one, two, three, and four in the competition here today. Fromberger looking so comfortable here. She looks so smooth around this course. No problems at all. And Strauss now coming into her own. She didn't panic in that initial melee as they came off from the line. She thought, you know, we've got plenty of time here to make our way round Fromberger. Well, she's really opening up the gas now. She's opened the gap to the riders behind. And that's certainly over the top. They're very, very smooth. Not expending any energy she doesn't need to. Behind then it's Strauss, followed by Matos and De Vries currently in fourth position. They've got to keep her pushing to the line because at the moment, if they have a slight problem, the slightest mechanical or issue, they are going to be having uh, very little time to uh, sort it out, but I don't think any problems for Marion Fromberger. Fromberger comes through, then he's going to be Strauss being chased uh, by Matos here. So it is Marion Fromberger who takes the race win here at the UCI XE uh, round number eight. She's going to maximise those voices, race victory for Fromberger. Then it is Strauss in second place, then it is Matos coming in and through behind and got to say, really interesting to see the riders at altitude fighting as uh, Diddy De Vries comes in fourth position. So confirmed then, it is Marion Fromberger with the win here at round number eight. With Mauricio Strauss in second, Marcella Lima Matos in third. And Diddy De Vries taking away fourth position in our women's competition. Great racing. Now, one more race to go. It is the men's final here at Lake Ladakh. We've got Stefan May of Germany, Daniel Castillo, Nayolo of Mexico, Eric Fierro of Ecuador, and uh, we have, of course, uh, Felix Klausman of Germany on the right-hand side. Klausman with a little bit of a stall on that start, but I think he got away cleanly enough. Mayer on the left of your screen, so has been very quick from that start. Klausman is in second position. He's only half a bike in front. Look at the move there by Nayolo. Wow, that was warm maneuver. We said earlier on he was a man who wasn't afraid to make the move. They all relaxed coming into that corner. He saw them napping. He said, thank you very much. That's fine. I'm in. He's come through. Klausman has followed him through into that corner. And it is now a total reversal of the positions that they came off as coming into that first corner. What a change around. Instigated by the man on the front. That is Daniel uh, Castillo Niolo now onto this jump. Look at the height that Fierro gets. He clears the whole lot. He basically takes it as one obstacle 
takes off at the very start lands on the uh, exit ramp he's going to carry so much speed through being able to do that so niolo leading them round at the end of lap one three riders all together here and it is going to be a uh, distance between a mayor and the riders in front so this time round niolo leading as they go in, one more lap to go here. Last lap for the riders here in Lake Ladakh. And it is uh, Daniel Castillo de Yolo with uh, Fierro behind Fierro. Though will make a move if he can. He's not going to be afraid to do that. He was carrying pace. He tried to go up there. He had to just take some pace off because he was all about to take out the rear gear. I think there in the yellow, he had his wheels overlapping up on it to the step up. They go now. Fierro goes on the right hand side. The yellow looks across his help yourself, sunshine. Well, look at this. Fierro now, I think, has got the energy. I think Niolo's effort was put into making that move. He's into second place, and Klausman is now moving. Did Niolo do too much too soon? Fierro could be coming through for victory here. He's going to be ecstatic if he can, but look at Klausman. He's on the left-hand side of him. He comes around the shoulder. Klausman saved it all to the end. Felix Klausman takes a win. What a race here today. And you can see how much it means to him. Great sprint in through the finish. Fierro comes in second place. Castillo de Yolo in third. What a race of finish. What a move made by the Yellow early on. It wasn't enough though. And Clownsman saved the best till last there. Going through the finish. What a race here in Lake Ladat. As we see the uh, Lake Palace up at the top. Now let's watch this again. You can see how much these positions changed on the way through. Great sprint off on the line, but look at the move here by Niola. Comes round on the inside. Yep, thank you very much. Help myself. You lot are just taking it easy. And he keeps it now. Do you think this is going to be it? It's got it dialed. Up over the top they go. Fierro, though, had those jumps dialed, but he didn't have enough to beat Klausman in that sprint. Felix Klausman taking check, race check, victory check, here check, today. Check, check, one, two, three. One. Some amazing racing here in Lech Ladat and confirmation of the final result in the men's competition. Felix Klausman, Eric Fierro, Daniel Castillo Niolo, and Stefan Mayer. The riders one, two, three, four in our men's competition here in Lech Ladat. So here in Lake Ladakh, a great racing from all of our competitors in this stunning Five, setting in the Himalayas at the edge of Tibet. A brilliant place to watch the races come out and ride. I'm hoping our riders enjoyed it as much as we did. Let's hear from uh, our riders shortly. But first of all, we're going to have the ceremony. Third place going to Marcella Lima Matos. Mariska Strauss taking the second position and top spot going to Marion Fromberger who is our winner here today. Fromberger taking the race a win and no, 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 no. I'm sure Marion will be Marion very stay. happy indeed with that. A great okay. race and very smoothly done Framing, indeed. Okay. I think we can hear from her. She's just down on the podium I'm just going now. to ask you one question again. Okay. How did the race go? Okay, so Marion, back to back wins. Palankaraya at now in lay. How does it feel to win a race right one after another? It feels really great. Um, I'm really happy about this victory because I was a bit nervous before the race because of the high altitude. And, but I managed it really well, so better than I thought. And I'm really happy and it's amazing to win here in Le. It's an amazing city and with the mountains view, it's just amazing here. Congratulations on your win today. Thank you so much. So great to hear from Marion down there as we look out over the temple here, the Stanty Stupid Temple, uh, just uh, on the side of the hill, a real tourist uh, hotspot down here and uh, great to see the riders really getting into the culture. The overall standings, we've got it all men is still leading, but that lead is substantially narrowed by Marion Fromberger's win here today and uh, Matos coming in in third place uh, in the series at the moment ahead of the 
great, great to see them uh, racing here. And that uh, goes on as will our men, our top three men here today. Great racing from all of our competitors and a great final race from three, these three riders. And the third place going to Daniel Castillo Niolo, second place to Eric Fierro, but it is Jonas Felix Klausman centre stage and taking the race win here today. So fantastic racing by our riders, and uh, they were definitely working very hard on that final uh, section. Felix, with that amazing uh, sprint, maybe he was inspired by the mountains around him. He uh, left the uh, best uh, till uh, last and put in an amazing sprint in to come around the side. I didn't think that was going to be possible, but uh, he seemed to have that nailed. Let's hear from him now. Win, so I'm, I'm really happy. I didn't know that it worked so good and happy to win. It's a really good feeling. Did the altitude play any part of any changes of how you, you tried to do your strategy today to win? Uh, I had a little troubles in the first days here. So I didn't train too much in this beginning and during the race I recognized okay, not too much in the first lap and in the uphill I have good power today and there uh, I took the win today so tactic was a big point today. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. So we can see the overall standings here with Simon Gegenheimer at the top of the series standings. Tito and Perrin Gagne in second place, Schwarzenberger in third, but Felix Klausman now up into that 200 point marker. 208 points for Felix, and that means he's moved up, as has Castillo, Nuyolo, and Fierro, and Lind, all benefiting. Olstam maybe not profiting as much as he would have wanted. So some amazing action at altitude here in LA and a great addition to the XCE World Cup circuit. Round eight complete. We're going to move on to round number nine and we're going to be heading over to Paris on the 10th of September. I'm sure our riders will have benefited from their trip up here and enjoyed the amazing sights and sounds of LA in Ladakh. So from me, Matt Payne, from all of the team at the XEE Mountain Bike Eliminator. For the UCI, stay safe, enjoy yourselves, and we'll see you again soon.